All right, so I'm going to go over an example of how we can use Python to uh, solve some problems that would otherwise be tedious to do by hand. Um, so this is a this is modeling a previous lab that I did where we had a metal ball and we launched it from a projectile launcher sitting on top of a table, and we could change the angle at which we launched the ball. Um, so we could launch it straight out at say theta zero, or we could launch it straight up at theta ninety, or maybe at an angle in between at theta forty five. And the goal of the lab was to see uh, what was the most optimal angle theta uh, that we would launch the ball at, such that it traveled the furthest distance. And I am able to iterate through every angle theta from zero through ninety and see how far it got and track the record distance of the ball. Um, we learn a couple things from this Python demonstration. Uh, I actually show the difference is small uh, for the impact of drag on the ball. Uh, so I use the Rayleigh drag force. Um, it doesn't really change the optimal angle theta. It, it impacts the distance a little bit so the ball doesn't go as far. But as for the optimal angle, that's roughly the same. Um, and the other thing that we learn here is that the optimal launch angle will actually change depending on the initial launch height. So whether the ball is being launched from on top of this table, uh, it would have a different optimal angle um, versus whether the ball was launched already sitting from the floor. Um, so with that in mind, uh, let me run this code. Um, and then I'll go through what this code is actually doing. Um, so we see the ball being launched for each angle theta. Um, and we see the record distances being recorded. Um, so we see it about 33 degrees that hits its max distance of about 1.24 meters. Um, and we see starting out the change in distance is not very much uh, between thetas. But as we approach 90 degrees, the change in distance between thetas is much higher. That's why we're able to see these lines distinctly when we weren't able to see them starting out. So I find that interesting. Um, so with that in mind, let me go ahead and go through this code. Um, and then I'll do an example with Rayleigh Drag Force. So what I've got here, essentially I've got an outer while loop and I loop through each theta and then I've got an inner loop that deals with launching a ball for each theta. And this inner loop deals with the movement of that ball for each launch theta. Um, so I start at an initial height of about a meter above, above the floor. I've got our force due to gravity, our initial velocity of the ball, our initial theta of zero, viscosity of air, we use that for Rayleigh drag force later. Um, and I start out with the, let me see, so I've got the movement of the ball actually being dealt with inside of this while loop. Um, so I've got the velocity for this uh, iteration. Um, that is the momentum divided by the mass. I've got the gravitational force acting on the ball, that's the mass of the ball times the gravity vector. Um, I've got the drag coefficient of a sphere from Wikipedia. I have the mass density of air. Um, I have the area of the ball that's affected by drag, that's half the surface area of the ball. I've got the flow velocity um, relative to the object. So air should be stationary, so that's just the magnitude of our ball's velocity here. Um, and I plug those all into our Rayleigh drag equation. Um, and we calculate the net force, uh, which is the gravitational force and our drag force. And we're able to use that to update the ball's momentum. Um, so that's our previous momentum plus our net force times delta time. And with that, we're able to update the ball's position. Um, so we have our previous position plus the velocity of the ball times delta time. That is our new position. Um, 
I update the time. I've got some code down here that checks if we, if our current x distance uh, here is greater than the last record distance, then go ahead and update this as a new record distance. Um, and go ahead and print out that angle theta to the screen and how far the ball traveled. Um, and then I've got some code down here that's in our outer while loop where we're actually looping through each of the thetas. Um, so let me go ahead and I claimed that drag force didn't matter so our optimal angle here uh, was 33 degrees and we went about 1.24 meters. That's with drag force. Um, so let me go ahead and remove drag force. So all that's acting on the ball now is gravity. Um, so we will see that the ball won't go as far. It won't go... No, I'm sorry. The ball will go further because drag force is no longer acting on it. Uh, so before it went about 1.24 meters. And we see it goes about 1.37 now. That's our max distance. Um, but the intuition that we had in our lab that uh, drag doesn't matter for this lab because drag is small for our small object. That is correct. We see that the optimal angle theta of 32 degrees is roughly the similar to our original optimal angle theta of 33 degrees uh, with drag. Um, so the other thing that we learn is that the optimal angle changes with our initial launch height. Um, so if we, instead of launching it from a meter above the ground, if we launch it at the ground, uh, we see a much different optimal angle theta. Um, so instead of 32 or 33 degrees, we instead see about 45 degrees as the optimal angle theta. And then it just stops. That's the furthest that you can get the ball to travel if you're from the floor is launch it at 45 degrees and that's that's as far as it will go. Um, and we see that regardless of whether we've got drag force or not. Um, so if I go ahead and add that drag force back in here, um, launching from the floor, we should see uh, 45 degrees is still our optimal angle. Right, yes, and we see 45 degrees there.